So uh, I have an aunt that lives in Grand Prairie and, and uh, who works for a, a Texas ex, uh, a dentist, uh, Fred Coleman. And uh, they're football fans, and uh, of course uh, she'd see me play a couple times. And uh, I always have been uh, someone interested in uh, coming down here to play ball or in the south somewhere. So uh, it kind of just worked around so that uh, she talked to Fred, and Fred wrote to Daryl, and they asked for my films. You uh, almost went to Notre Dame or had to, had some interest expressed from them, I understand. Yeah, I wrote, uh, or they wrote me a, a questionnaire, and I filled it out and wrote uh, on the back that I was really interested in Notre Dame and uh, would seriously consider, you know, visiting or maybe, you know, going even going there. But uh, when I sent it back, uh, I never did get a reply from them, so I didn't. I don't know if they didn't want me or what. Did, what happened? So. I would assume that you did hear rather quickly from the University of Texas. Yeah, uh, I'm not really sure when they got my films or anything. Uh, all I know is know is that uh, they asked me to come down. Uh, coach didn't tell me that he had even sent them films until they wrote back. Governor, what is your reaction to the federal judge's order to immediately provide a commodity distribution program in every Texas county, not under the present federal food stamp program? Of course, my feelings are that where there's uh, actual and real poverty, that there should be some relief. There's one danger here, however, and I think that would be to the effect that those counties who have assumed their responsibilities and have worked out their programs uh, on a local level might be penalized to some extent uh, if the federal government takes over, so to speak, in the other counties. I think you're going to see here uh, probably a tendency on those who have assumed their responsibility just to turn that back and to join in with the rest and uh, take the, the welfare program as the federal government uh, says we must have it. This program is the responsibility of the Department of Agriculture. Will the governor's office see that the Department of Agriculture gets full cooperation from the state? Yes, of course, we'll be glad to work. You know, I always have advocated a government of law and not a government of men, and I certainly will work with the laws, however they are handed down by the Supreme Court. The decisions that are made are not mine alone. The officers of the association will be uh, contacted, we will meet, we'll discuss what our plans are. From that we'll decide what our plan of attack, if we're going to do anything. Uh, it's it's entirely possible any way we might go. This could lean uh, one of several ways, since uh, in some cases this is a very small amount of money for a department to receive versus their total budget. Uh, some of these departments may decide they don't want to fight any county fire. Uh, this I haven't arrived at a decision yet. We'll have to work that out later. More than 20 bands arriving here, and some of them have already arrived here at Fair Park for the annual Cotton Bowl Day Parade. And from, we'll be talking with some of the kids, getting their impressions of what it's like on New Year's Day here. And it may it just may be a noisy time in Old Big D. <laughs>
Barbara, what's, uh, what's it feel like to be in a big city like Dallas on New Year's Eve? Well, it's quite different from Morgantown because we usually spend it with just our family watching television or something very non-exciting like that. And I expect a little bit more out of Dallas. All right, now, you uh, as a head majorette uh, wear a regular, typical majorette uniform. How cold do you get, really? Terribly cold. <laughs> the, the wind blows and you wouldn't believe it. They have a, an insulation in the uniform, but it's not enough to keep you warm. Jim, do you ever feel that uh, the wind's going to blow you away when uh, you're out there on the marching field playing? Yes, on one of our marching excursions to Dallas, we, one of the nice Dallas northern winds blew in, and I thought I was going to do a counter march without the rest of the band. This is Carl Mayo, Channel 8 News, on the move. It was billed as a showdown. It was, at best, a standoff, which left the Volunteer Firemen's Association hanging in a political economic balance. Clarence Presley, himself a volunteer fireman, issued an impassioned plea for the court to adopt a $100,000 annual budget, which included a salary for Mason Langford to begin July 1st and to amount to $15,500 annually. The commissioners were, as I have seldom seen them, apparently at a loss for words. No one seemed very inclined to even acknowledge Presley's presentation. Finally, the man at the center of the controversy, longtime volunteer county fire marshal Mason Langford, approached the court. He wore the look of a man who was both humiliated at the extended confrontation and approaching the end of his endurance. He said his record was clear, that he had worked long and hard and practically for free, that a full-time man was needed now, that he wanted a job, and that his regular employer wanted a yes or no answer tonight. If he takes the answer the court apparently gave, the answer is no. Skeet Richardson and Judge Howard Green offered their support to Langford. Punch Wright said no. Commissioners Lewis and Anderson offered tacit and very effective support for Wright by not saying anything. 
The courtroom was filled with volunteer firemen this morning, there to show their support for Mason Langford, and they showed their dismay when the tide went against them. I think it should be said in their behalf that although there was much emotion this morning and much intense feeling, the question they asked was not, shall we continue to serve as volunteer firemen? They consider that a self-imposed duty which they'll not likely be slighting. They did ask the question, who's running for re-election next year? Their intent was clear, and that, after all, is what the American system is all about. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News, Fort Worth.